Hello and welcome to my series of videos on the Bantan Universe storyline or the Hyogyana storyline. Um, I wanted to put together just a series of videos that explains all of the backstory and the actual story found in the notes, uh, the webtoon, all that sort of stuff. So this is kind of new for me to put like on my channel, but this is actually sort of in conjunction with a website that I just launched, which is called thebtseffect.com. So over there is where I'm going to start housing all of my writings related to BTS and any research that I do, you know, talking about the Bangtan universe, but also going into like media studies and fan studies territory. Um, the website is still new, so I'm launching it at the same time that I'm like posting the first couple of videos. And I just thought it would be good to have like video form of some of this stuff and like text-based blog posts for some of this stuff. So if you're interested, and more related to Bangtan Universe or BTS in general, you can check that website out. I will leave a link in the description below. So like I mentioned, this is going to be the first video in the series, and I don't know right now how many videos it's going to be because I anticipate these videos being pretty long just because it takes a while to explain the story. There's a lot of content that we already have, and if you know anything about the Bangtan Universe and the Huangana storyline, it's pretty like convoluted in some ways because there is you know like the webtoon there's the Huangyana notes that come in the albums there's the book that was released separately uh, music videos you know there's all sorts of stuff so I am going to try and do these in what I think is a logical order so this first video is actually going to be on Smeraldo and the Smeraldo blog and I'll get into that in just a second um, I think these videos for now are going to be me sitting in front of the camera um, even though I prefer not to do that because it'll be less difficult for me to edit. If I edit a video essay, you know, copyright is a thing and you can't even take screenshots in the webtoon, for example, unless you do a workaround. So it's just hard to kind of edit stuff together for this sort of thing. So I think for now it'll just be me talking to the camera, but we'll see. So like I said, this is the first video in the series and I'm not really sure how many videos there will be in this series because I don't know how long these videos are going to be, so I might have to break them up into multiple videos even if I'm talking about the same uh, the same thing, whether it's like Webtoon or the Huang Yana Notes, whatever it is. So yeah, I will go into first covering the Smeraldo blog and the Smeraldo story, and this is basically background information before you get into the Webtoon and the Huang Yana Notes. So I chose to cover the Smeraldo flower information first because it's basically background information and it just gives you a little bit of background story and some context, and it's not really all that closely linked to the actual BU storyline, so as we'll see as you go on through the different content, like it will show up in the Huang Yana Notes, but it's not as you know, relevant to the storyline as the other plot events. So to get started, the Smeraldo blog appeared on Naver, I think it was maybe a month before BTS came back with their Her album, which of course was the first album in the Love Yourself series. So at the time, nobody knew that the series was going to be called Love Yourself, and nobody knew that the album would be called Her, and nobody really knew anything at that time what to expect. So. It was found by the fandom, I believe, after Sokjin tweeted a photo with a bouquet of blue flowers, and the flowers are not really recognizable as any type of flower that exists, and the only caption to the tweet was the word Smeraldo, and I don't remember exactly how quickly people found out, but collectively as a fandom, basically, somebody found the blog on Naver, probably through searching, you know, Smeraldo, and it came up on Naver, as a blog, um, which appears to be created by a florist or a flower shop owner, and it's all in Korean, so originally it was just sort of, you know, not really sh sure if it was linked to BTS, but people were able to figure out that it was actually linked to BTS, because if you looked at some of the image description text on the website, it had clues there, and so people just sort of figured out this is probably related to the comeback, we just don't know how. So the blog eventually uploaded nine stories originally, and they were all related to the Smeraldo flower, which is of course what Sokjin had uploaded a photo of. And to start with, there were only nine stories, I think now there are eleven, the blog is actually still active, but we'll get into why it has changed from the way it first appeared. 
So the Smeralda flowers are fictional and it seems that they were created just for the purpose of this story and for some reason related to this comeback and later on the Huayana storyline in general. So right now I'm going to go through each of the stories and summarize the blog posts that were originally found on the blog. So the first blog post starts off with the florist who goes by the screen name Testesso, which means yourself in Italian. I don't know if that pronunciation is right, but we're just going to go with it. So it means yourself, and he posts his blog and says that he wants to open a flower shop in Korea that sells smeralda flowers, even though they're really rare and hard to grow. And he mentions that he went to like a flower lecture series or conference in the US, but he actually got the date wrong. So he didn't get to attend this event and instead ended up at a playing card event. So both of these will come back later in the story. But he provides a photo of the flowers on the blog and says that in flower language they mean the truth untold. And of course if you're a fan and you're familiar with the Tear album, we actually have a song called The Truth Untold. In Korean, sorry, it's hard for me to switch back and forth. But that is the song that this is referencing, and at the time we had no idea, of course, that that was going to be a song title. But the flower is supposed to mean the truth untold. The second story, or the second blog post, mentions that the shop is set to open in September of 2017. And that's actually when BTS's Her album released, but of course, you know, back then we didn't know exactly what was going on. Now we can look back and see this was timed on purpose, you know, for a reason. And he wanted to open his flower shop to bring happiness to other people with his flowers and he planned deliveries to have a delivery truck and his flower shop. And the flower shop at the time he wrote this post was still under construction. As we'll see later in the Huayana notes, which is actually what tells most of the story of the BU, um, both the delivery truck and the flower shop that are under construction make an appearance. The third blog post goes into the Smeralda flower being a flower of legend and how the Smeralda flowers were actually discovered. So the, the uh, florist says that in 2013, a friend he met at that playing card event that was supposed to be a flower event that he went to, that friend called him and said that someone actually discovered the Smeralda flowers in real life and so they weren't just fictitious. The florist posts a screenshot of someone on Instagram who said they discovered the flower and if you look at the username on that Instagram account, it's actually Amari Zero, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's supposed to mean love in Italian, so if you put that together with the florist's screen name on his blog, we get Love Yourself, which of course was the name of the next series that was coming out at the time. That Instagram post in the screenshot is actually dated June 12th of 2013, which of course is BTS's debut date, and the person who posted it on Instagram says that they found the flowers growing in northern Italy in the city of Smeraldo which was a village in medieval times, but now it's just a forested area because the village was basically wiped out during the Black Death. Florist also notes that many people tried to grow the Smeraldo flower, but everyone failed because it was so hard to grow. The fourth story actually goes into the legend of the Smeraldo flower, which says that in the 15th or 16th century, in the village known as the city of Smeraldo in northern Italy, there lived a man of very grotesque appearance, and so he lived in a castle by himself. He was supposedly an illegitimate child of a powerful duke and a gardener, so for his own safety they sent him away to live in a castle by himself and he really hated everyone and didn't want to go out into the world, so he just stayed in his castle and grew flowers in his garden. So one day a girl steals flowers from the man's garden and he gets really angry about it and he basically goes and sits in his garden and just watches to wait for her to come back and steal more. And she doesn't come back at first, so he pretends to fall asleep and when he does that she comes back steals more flowers, and he follows her secretly to see where she goes. She actually goes to the market to sell the flowers to make a living because she's very poor. So the man actually wants to help the girl grow her own flowers so that she can sell them and make money, but he's worried that his appearance will scare her off, so he decides just to keep growing flowers for her to come and take. So he also wants to create a special flower that she can sell for more money, so he goes into his castle and he works to create the Smeraldo flower, and he plants those in his garden and waits for her to come take some. However, he notices that she doesn't come back, and one day he goes into the village to find out that she has died. 
So the florist admits that he doesn't know if this is just a myth or if it's actually supposed to be, you know, true and have any truth to those flowers growing, but he says that he can relate the story to his own life experience a little bit. He doesn't go into much detail, but he says that he actually cared a lot about the friend from the playing card event that he mentioned previously, and now he has a wound that time cannot heal. So in Italian, Smirado actually means emerald, and if you look at the Italian title from The Wizard of Oz, I'll put it on the screen because I don't know how to pronounce it, but that title translates more accurately to like the city, the Emerald City of Oz. And so we know from that movie and that storyline, there's a man who hides himself behind the curtain and doesn't really show his true self to people, just like the man in the legend. And we actually do see this reflected in the BU storyline with Sokchen's story, but it's not quite as dramatic. So basically, Sokchen seeks out these Smirado flowers because he wants to make someone happy and he wants to be a good person, but he's also been lying to her and we'll definitely get into that later. But he becomes afraid of revealing himself to her and when he's about to confess and give the flowers to her, she's killed by the Smirado delivery truck. So there is a Huayangyana note that details that story, which I will get into later, but I feel like it's important to mention it here because it's definitely a cross-reference with the Smeraldo legend. So in the fifth story, the floor starts to link the Smeraldo flower with playing cards. Of course, we have the flower event and the playing card event, so we should expect that to appear somewhere in the story. And it does come up because he says that William Ashbless who was an Italian poet who loved playing cards, is actually the person who discovered the Smeraldo flowers growing near the ruins of a castle. So William Ashbless asks around like about this flower, if anybody knows what it is, and people just tell him the legend of the man in the castle, and so he decides to name the flower Smeraldo after the village or the city of Smeraldo. Due to the story of that myth, he assigned the flower language or the flower's meaning as the truth that couldn't be told. It's said that he also created a Smeraldo or flower card to add to his playing deck and the meaning of that card when it's upright was supposed to mean bloom or fruition and when it was in its reverse reading it would mean fall, end, or new start. The florist then says that William Ashbless and his Smeraldo playing card were lost to history due to power struggles between his family and other families of nobles. So it's important to note that in reality William Ashbless is actually not real. He is a fictional poet created in the 1970s by James Blaylock and Tim Powers. So this next part has some French names in it, which I'm sure I'm going to butcher, so please just ignore that. I will put them on the screen just in case I'm really saying it wrong. But basically the sixth story on the blog focuses on a painting titled Madame Le Normand on the Salon by French artist Jean-Francois Roland. I don't know if that's right. Uh, Le Normand was a French astrologer who did tarot readings for nobles and eventually for Empress Josephine and that was Napoleon's wife at the time, and the florist writes that there are many paintings of that woman, the tarot reader, uh, with cards, and the On the Salon painting itself showed her holding the flower card that Ashbless had created. Supposedly this painting was actually destroyed in a fire, so the only portion that remains is the picture of the hand with the flower card, which is shown on the blog post. So of course Napoleon and his wife Josephine are real people from history, and Madame Lenormand, if that's how you say it, she is actually real too. She was a fortune teller in the Napoleonic era, and she did advise Josephine before she became empress, at least from the best that I can tell. Um, the On the Salon painting was actually probably fictional. It doesn't seem that that was real, and it doesn't seem that the artist mentioned in the blog post is real either. At least as far as I can tell, I may have missed it, but I have not found an artist by that name or a painting by that name. So in the seventh story, we get more of the florist's personal story. He talks about his friend from that playing card event and how he spotted her the morning that they were supposed to leave for Italy together to look for the Smeraldo flowers. And he sees her at the airport um, with some cool looking guy, and he gets really insecure and basically hides himself because he doesn't want to see her in front of this other guy. So even though she calls him, he doesn't answer the phone and he gets on the plane hoping that she'll come looking for him, but she doesn't get on the plane. So he goes to Italy by himself and while he's there, he thinks he hears something knocking on his window at night even though he's on the second floor, but he doesn't open his window to see what it is. 
So the next day, his friend's brother actually calls him and tells him that the girl was in an accident while rushing around the airport looking for someone, the florist, and she died because the accident was so severe. The florist also learns that his shop plans for Korea were approved so he can open his Smeraldo shop and so he begins to believe that he's tied to these Smeraldo flowers due to fate. So it's also unclear if the florist sees the girl at the airport with her brother, since her brother is the one that calls him later, or if it was just someone else that we don't know who it is. But regardless, he doesn't get to confess his feelings and he basically, you know, hid his truth from her. And that's a recurring theme that we're going to see over and over again. And it's much like Sokjin's story in the Hwayangyana storyline with the whole accident with the Smeraldo truck. So the eighth story actually starts to tie the BU to the Smeraldo blog. So the florist notes that he goes into the flower shop and he meets a young man who he feels like he's met before, but the young man is asking about Smeraldo flowers and the florist says that he can have some ready for delivery by the end of August. So then we see a photo of the receipt and next to customer name it says Kim Seok Jin and the signature is Seok Jin's real signature. So that is tying our two worlds together basically. And the florist asks him why he wants Smeraldo flowers, like why it has to be that flower. And he answers that it's because he wants to be a good person. The florist also takes a personal note from Sopchen to deliver with the flowers, but we don't know the contents of that note. And the florist says he wants to work with Smeraldo flowers in order to help other people deliver their true feelings. And he wonders what would have happened if he himself had done so with his friend from the story at the airport. So later, this scene is actually written into the Huangyana notes. So in the ninth story, the florist says that he got his first batch of Smeraldos through customs, so he will be able to deliver the flowers on August 30th, 2017, which is the date that Sokjin had asked for them to be delivered by. And later in the Huangyana notes, we will see that there are several entries dated August 30th, and we'll go into that later, but that's basically where we learn about the tragedy with the delivery truck and everything that occurs with that delivery. So now the interesting part about the Smeraldo blog is that the 8th and 9th stories that I just told you about, those were the original 8th and 9th stories that appeared on the blog. However, if you were to go look at the blog now, those stories are not there and they are different. So the content of them is different than it was originally. And I don't know if those original ones are located anywhere, but there are translations that are still up. So you can read those if you want. But Basically, it looks like the blog was deleted and then re-uploaded and those two notes changed, but nothing else changed. So what changes is that in the first 8th and ninth note, Sokjin comes in, he orders the flowers, and the florist in the next note says that he is able to deliver them on August 30th because they made it through customs. But in the new version of the 8th and ninth notes, or the 8th and ninth stories rather, the florist says that he goes to the flower shop and he feels like somebody is going to come in but no one ever does. So Sokjin never shows up in this version of the blog post and that's the version that's still up right now. So he never comes in and he, this florist does not deliver any flowers on August 30th because no one ordered them. So getting into a little bit more detail, which I will go into this way better with <laughs> further videos, but basically I think Big Hit you know, deleted these entries and re-uploaded them to fit in with the whole time travel. You know, that's the whole premise of the story of Huang Yana Notes is that Hook Tin is going back in time and he's trying to fix things in the past. So since the active posts right now on the blog do not have him coming in to buy the flowers and the flowers are not delivered because he never goes into the flower shop, those I'm taking as the truth, as in the current truth of the story. So that means that the notes in the albums and the book and everything where Sokjin gets the flowers delivered and the traffic accident happens, that gets undone and the note from the answer album from August 30th where he instead goes to meet the girl and gives her her diary back, which he had taken, or he found rather, and he'd held on to it, he gives her that back and basically walks away. And I take that to be the current sort of resolution to the story because we know that because the blog posts changed, the flowers were never delivered. So those notes that talk about the flowers being delivered and the accident happening have now basically been erased. So after that happened where the 8th and ninth stories changed, the blog only uploaded two more stories, the 10th and 11th story. And so one was on August 24th, 2018, announcing the opening of the shop the next day. 
and that was also the first day of BTS's Love Yourself concert in Seoul and there was actually a Smeraldo themed merch booth at those concerts, the two-day concert on the 25th and the 26th and the 11th story appeared on September 3rd, 2018 and it thanked everyone for their interest on the 25th and 26th of August um, so basically all the fans who came and bought merch from those booths um, the floor says that they'll be focusing on flowers instead of the blog and so it's possible we won't get any more updates there. So at the end of it all, we're basically left with a question of, you know, why does this blog exist? And to me, it's just another vehicle for storytelling. I think maybe, you know, Big Hit's creative team wanted to add some lore to this world of flowers so that it fits in better with the story being a flower that means the truth untold, and that's a huge theme throughout the entire story. And it also gives us a clue as to what some of the resolution to the why Hyung Yoon's storyline might be, since we know that there are multiple notes from August 30th and they can't all be true because they contradict each other. And we also have a note from August 30th where, you know, Seok Jin doesn't get the flowers, and that in turn seems to prevent the girl from dying, so that might be the true end to that part of the story. So I think it was just a way to sort of bring the story into the real world with a blog that appeared to be, you know, run by a real florist. And yeah, I don't know that we'll be updated on that in any way. It doesn't look like it because there's not been any updates to that blog since 2018, so it's been almost a, well, it's been actually right around a year now, and there's not been any updates. So I don't expect there to be any more blog posts, but it's something to keep an eye on. So basically, that's it for this story, the Smeraldo story. It's just basically lore, legend, background, context information. It helps explain you know, what these flowers mean and why they were important to Seok Jin in the story. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I plan for the next video to be on Save Me, the webtoon that came out. I think that came out this year in April, if I am getting my dates right. So that will be the next video that will explain the story of that webtoon, and then I will make future videos that explain the story of Hwa Yana as we know it so far. Of course, it is currently still not finished, so we will get more information at some point. But yeah, that's it for this one, and I hope that made sense. And if you want more information or, you know, want to learn more about BTS-related things, not just the storyline, but just in general, I am still updating everything over on the BTSeffect.com, and you can learn more over there. Thank you for watching.